You said you were in here. What can I do for you, Mrs Hughes? Nothing. You can do nothing for me, because I know who you are, and I know what you've done. And while you're here, if you value your life, I should stop playing the Joker and keep to the shadows. I'm afraid we were a bit drunk that night, Anna and I. So you're right. We were both to blame. No, Mr Green. You were to blame, and only you. Does Mr Bates know? Not that it was you. Thank you. Don't you dare thank me. I've not kept silent for your sake. But how did you do it? Oh, I, I must have stumbled and fallen over in the wrong way. Mrs Patmore put on a bandage, but I'll go to the doctor in the morning if it's no better. How are you going to cook? I can't cook. I can't lift. But it's not difficult. I'll talk you through it. Don't worry. You mean... I'm going to cook? It's very straightforward. Now, get the chicken in the oven right away, then peel the potatoes and prepare the cauliflower. Oh, and put a kettle on to boil. You should find bread and an onion for the bread sauce. Butter and milk are in the meat safe outside. This crumble's good. My mother's was always a bit soggy. Mm. <laughs> crumble. Oh, is that it now? Are we done? Just put the things in to soak. And make sure you cover the pots with water. You don't have to do the washing up till tomorrow if you don't want to. You won't be better by the morning. Oh, not for that. We could ask Billy to come over, but he's got his own work to do. You don't mind, do you? Oh. No, I don't mind. How can I help, Mr Branson? I was thinking... It's just... Yes? I thought I'd come down for supper tonight. Catch up with your news. If you'd like to, of course you'd be very welcome. We don't eat late while the family's away, so dinner will be at about eight o'clock. I'll see you then. Fain's I tell Mr Carson. What time are we leaving? About half past four, but Mr Stark can easily drive us. Because I'm so high and mighty. You're part of the family now. There's nothing false in that. I know. I hope you do. Because if someone is trying to make you feel awkward, they're in the wrong, not you. I'll be there at half past four. So I spoiled things for her. I'm afraid the work would no longer satisfy her. I've seen it before. She'd unsettled the other maids. We didn't encourage her, you know. Maybe. But if I may say it, you didn't discourage her either. Can I ask one thing? That you give her a decent reference. Please. I will. Though I don't think she's cut out to be a housemaid. Would you allow me to speak as I would have in the old days? Go on then. You let Edna make you ashamed of your new life. But you've done well. And Lady Sybil would be so proud. <laughs> I can't bear to be without her. You must bear it. And one day, I hope, and so would she, 
you'll find someone to bear it with you. <laughs> but until then, be your own master and call your own tune. I can't stay much longer. Nanny's bringing down Sibby in a moment. It won't take long. She's coming now. Ah. I see. What do you see? Well, I know now why you sent for me. You're going to gang up on me and try to pay me off. Why would we pay you off? Well, if I'm pregnant. But I want my baby to have a father and I won't change my mind about that. However much you offer. I wasn't planning to make an offer. Because there is no child. What? You can't know that. Nobody can. But I do know that, actually. Edna's not pregnant. Do you think she would have let herself get pregnant before she was sure of you? And she knew how to prevent it. Why else would you buy this book of instructions? Marry Stopes, married love, though in your case it was unmarried love, wasn't it, dear? You've been through my things. What if I'd agreed to marry her and there was no baby? Once you'd agreed, she would have got pregnant, don't you worry. I don't know whom she would have selected as the father, but no doubt she had a candidate in mind. What proof have you got? Oh, none at the moment. But if you persist in your lie, I'll summon the doctor and have him examine you. You can't force me. Oh, yes, I can. First, I'll lock you in this room. Then, when he's arrived, I'll tear the clothes from your body and hold you down if that's what it takes. Well, you can't stop me from speaking to her ladyship. No, you're right. That I cannot do. But if you want a reference or another job during your natural lifetime, you'll hold your tongue. This is yours, I think. But even with the book, how did you know she wasn't pregnant? I didn't. And the doctor couldn't have told a thing yet, either. But at least we know the truth now. Come on! I dare you! But if I get my trousers wet... If you get them wet, we'll dry them. Suppose I fall over. Suppose a bomb goes off. Suppose we're hit by a falling star. You can hold my hand. Then we'll both go in together. I think I will hold your hand. It'll make me feel a bit steadier. You can always hold my hand if you need to feel steady. I don't know how, but you managed to make that sound a little risque. <laughs> and if I did? We're getting on, Mr Carson, you and I. We can afford to live a little. <laughs> <laughs>